Hey there, I'm Jensen. Now on Thursday, September 23rd, an Ohio youth baseball coach and a former school employee was convicted of multiple sex crimes. For those of you in Northwest Ohio, Ronald Donnie Stevens used to work at Ottawa Hills. The grand jury found him guilty of 31 out of 32 felony counts, all stemming from abuse involving at least six teenage boys. The prosecutors say went on from August 2017 through November 2019. Now, I should warn you, what I'm about to share may be disturbing. I'm going to walk you through the trial, what was said, and what comes next to get you in the loop. First, let's take a look at Donnie Stevens. He worked for Ottawa Hills local school starting in 2001 as a custodian and worked his way up to operations manager, which was his title in 2019. He's also been a youth sports coach for years. In 2017, he coached flag football for third to fifth graders. In 2019, he coached tackle football for fifth and sixth graders. Also in 2019, he coached K through eighth grade league baseball, but his longest stint as a coach was from 2015 through 2019 when he coached travel baseball. Now, it wasn't until late 2019 that his acts finally came to light. Superintendent Adam Fineski sent a letter home to parents on December 22nd of that year addressing allegations made against an employee and noting that that employee had been put on administrative leave. However, at that point, Stevens wasn't named and the nature of the allegations weren't specified. However, not long after that letter was sent, within the same month, in fact, operations manager Donnie Stevens was arrested and ultimately indicted on six counts of rape, six counts of sexual battery, and seven counts of gross sexual imposition. His wife, Christy Stevens, also worked for the district remotely. Now, she was placed on paid administrative leave on January 8th, 2020, just a day after her husband pleaded not guilty to the allegations. Now, the district never did confirm whether or not her leave was connected to her husband's case. Before the trial, a grand jury added three first-degree felony charges of rape, five fourth-degree felony charges of gross sexual imposition, and five fourth-degree felony charges of pandering obscenity involving a minor to Stevens' case, bringing the total to 32 felony charges against him. Stevens' trial began on Tuesday, September 14th, 2021, with two days of witnesses taking the stand. On Wednesday, the jury heard from an ex-girlfriend of one of the victims. Now, she said Stevens was always checking in on her boyfriend and wondering where he was. She recalled a time when the victim returned from the hospital saying he wasn't quite himself and he started to act strange whenever Stevens' name would come up. Hinting that there was something that he wanted to talk about where that was concerned. And a couple of weeks later, he did sit us down, like sit me down kind of and let me know that through a note that Donnie had been the reason that he when that he had been sexually abusing him. The director of technology and operations at Ottawa Hills Local Schools also spoke Wednesday, noting the black out film Stevens put over his office window so no one could see through. So if a teacher or administrator walked by and something illegal was happening in the office, they would not be able to see it. That's correct. No one would be able to see it. No, no one could see it. But it wasn't until Thursday that we first heard from the victims. All of them were friends with Stevens' son and even went over to the house for sleepovers. In their testimonies, they said that the relationship with Stevens didn't start off as abusive. In fact, he was more like a father figure and someone that they could confide in. But later, they said that he took advantage of that trust and began to abuse them. When he was doing that to you, how did that make you feel? Uh, scared. I didn't really know what to do about it. Did you ever tell him to stop? No. Why not? I didn't know what happened if I did. Were you afraid of what would happen if you did? Yes. Were you afraid no one would believe you? Yeah. Now, in their testimonies, multiple teens claimed that Stevens coerced them to send new pictures through Snapchat. The prosecution said that when police went through Stevens' deleted search history, one of his searches had the phrase, can Snapchat recover old files if they have a warrant? Now let's look at the defense. Stevens' team tried to establish that the incidents occurred in Stevens' home while his wife and kids were there, but were never seen by any of the family members. Stevens also told prosecutors that the victims made up their allegations, saying he raised them like his own sons and helped them build cars and took them to the gym. But when asked, Stevens did admit to having sexualized pictures of teenage boys on his cell phone. Isn't it true that you had photographs and images of teenage boys you masturbating on your phone? Yes. Okay. Closing arguments were heard on Wednesday, September 22nd, and a verdict was reached by 2.30 p.m. the very next day. Stevens was found guilty on 31 of the 32 charges. But what happens next? Well, Donnie Stevens will be sentenced on October 12th. And in Ohio, a single charge of rape carries a 3-11 to 11 year sentence, but ultimately, the time he'll serve is up to the judge and sentencing guidelines. 
But the question that's really hanging in the air right now is what will happen with his wife, Christy? Court documents filed in February of 2020 alleged Steven sent his wife a coded letter and kept an index for him to reference in jail. In the letter, he said, anything I wrote in your letter, no one else needs to know. The court document goes on to claim that those coded documents included secret ways to reference potential victims, specific counts in the indictment, and potential forms of payment used to purchase illegal materials involving a minor. At one point, the document reads, there are implied references that the defendant's wife may have culpability and could be arrested. As it stands, Christy Stevens is still on paid leave from the school, and as of September 24th, she has not been charged with any crimes. And the outcome of Stevens' trial comes after multiple victims came forward with their emotional testimony. And Dr. Christy Jenkins, the CEO of the Family and Child Abuse Prevention Center, says it's often really difficult for kids to feel comfortable speaking up. Children often don't tell because, one, they've been coached not to tell, they've been groomed not to tell, um, they've been threatened not to tell. She also made clear that parents have to have open communication with their kids. Talking to somebody is absolutely imperative, talking to your child. If your child makes a disclosure, do not blow it up. Do not have a fit about it. Be very calm, even though on the inside you're going bananas. Um, reach out to us. For resources on how to navigate these tough conversations with your kids and for a complete recap of the Stevens trial, I have links available for you in the description of this video. But that's it for today. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.